know we are in a very urgent, urgent time where people are so confused, mixed up. They are calling things that should be right, they're calling them wrong. They're calling things wrong that should be right. They are trying to what? Twist the word of God around to fit their own lifestyle. But in order for us and them to be able to see Jesus and be in the kingdom of God, we must, I say unto you, let our life be lined up with the word of God. And we bring to you today the words of God, the words of life, and the words of truth, and the words of faith which we preach. Amen. Which is the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Good news come to lift your spirits up today. Praise God. And let you know that you are somebody. Praise God. We were made in the very likeness and the image of God. Praise him. Can I get a witness? In the house of the Lord. Amen. Praise God. God is good all the time. And all the time God is good. Praise God. So many people are caught up in their own natural life. They are not sitting down and counting up the costs. How many of you know that Jesus Christ is soon to return? Jesus Christ is coming sooner than when we first believed. Can I get an amen? amen? Praise God. And some people, if they don't watch it, they will be caught off guard. All of a sudden, he shall appear. And they won't have an answer to be able to give Jesus when he come back. Amen? So it behooves everyone to be ready at all times. Amen. Amen. He comes not like a thief, but as a thief. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Now, how many of you know a thief will not let you know when he's going to come in there and take what he wants to take? Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. I'm so glad. I'm full today. Praise God. I got to watch myself. Praise God. Because I might take off running. <laughs> Praise God. I'm so full. Pray. Right. Amen. And didn't God move in the service this morning? Praise God. Oh, we just have a good time in here. People out there on TV, you are missing something. Praise God. The Holy Spirit is moving in this church as never before. Amen. Praise God. And we are full of the Spirit in here. Spirit of God. Amen. And let me, I'm going to let you know something else. God is alive and well. I wouldn't have it no other way. Amen. He is the same yesterday, today. And forever. And he do not change. Amen. Amen. How many of you know people around you that change all the time? <laughs> they change just like the weather in hour. Amen. One day they're cold. One day they're hot. One day they're warm. Amen. One day they look like everything. They got everything together. And someday they look confused as they can be. Amen. But this is the time we live in. We must expect some things like this. Praise God in this time. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. How many of you know the enemy of death is still doing his job? As we speak right now, many people are being called into judgment right now, into eternal life. Can I get an amen? Many people are leaving this world right now and going into eternity. And some have not counted up the cost and some have. Some have not accepted Jesus in their life and in their heart and some have. Amen? But in order to make it to heaven, in Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man will come unto the Father but by me. Praise God. Jesus is the door. There's no other way to go in. Praise God. You can go in any door you want to, but unless you go through Jesus Christ, you ain't going to make it to the kingdom of heaven. Amen? As we go into the word of God, praise God. Subject for the day is an unestimated time, part two. Praise God. <laughs> we had one two weeks ago, part one. And you can go over in St. Luke, the 12th chapter. And I believe we stopped off at the 46th verse the last time. But it's always good to read one verse up and ahead of it. Amen. Praise God. We must, as believers, I'm giving you time to get there. As leaders of the church, we must speak the word in in season and out of season. I don't care if they want to hear it or not. We must speak the word of God. I know people get mad, but that's all right. I can, really, I can take your madness. But if I can deliver your soul, 
That's one of the things that I desire to do for the kingdom of God. Can I get an amen? amen? We are all what disciples of Jesus Christ. We must win the loss. How many of you know so many people out there lost? they just wandering from one place to another, and they don't know where they're going. But we have the answer, people. Us believers of Jesus Christ, we have the answer for them. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. An unestimated time. Praise God. I went over in the dictionary and looked up unestimated. Un mean not. Not calculated right. People think they know when Jesus will return. But they cannot calculate it. They try to use their opinions. And you heard it before about 2012. You heard it. They said the world comes to the end. You heard that too. Amen. But the scripture said no man nor the day nor the hour. That Jesus Christ will return. Amen. But I'm going to bring it closer to you today. We don't know when Jesus Christ will return for us individually. See, God has got me on a twofold here message because everybody always think about the end, end time. But when is your time up? When is your number be pulled? Amen. When will God call your number out and say your time is up? You cannot escape when your life is not lined up in the word of God. Amen. Praise God. Let's read the scripture for today. Verse 45. Praise the Lord. But and if that servant say in his heart my Lord delays his coming and shall begin to beat the men servants and maidens and to eat and drink and be drunken. Praise God. And you can see in this verse 45 this is a person that have entered into a what? Backslidden condition. They, they have made up in their mind in their heart that they were going to go back to the begging elements of the world and go back like the dog that went to eat up the vomit and like the pig that went back to water in the mud. In the mud. How many of you know you don't want this to happen to you? You want to stay in what? On the straight and a narrow way. Can I get an amen in the house? Amen. Praise the Lord. Woo! The word of God is true. An unestimated time. Praise God. Verse 46. Praise God. And the Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him. And at an hour when he is not aware. And will cut him in sunder. And will appoint him his portion with the unbeliever. Let's expound on verse 46. Praise God. Let me read the Amplified Version. And the master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him. And at an hour which he does not know. And will punish him. Did you hear that? And cut him off. And assign him his lot with the unfaithful. And that's a shame, shame, shame. Amen? Amen. <laughs> we don't want this find ourselves in these type of conditions. Amen? Praise God. 46 verse. Praise God. And we move on down in it. Hallelujah. That's Lord of that servant will come in an unexpected time. Hallelujah. In a time that he's not aware and shall cut him, what? In two asunder. Praise the Lord. How many of you know they had them sharp swords back, you know, in the, in the day? They can cut you half in two. One of them swipes. Swoosh. And you will be separated from the waist down. <laughs> One part of the body will go this way. The other part will go that way. And this is going to happen in a powerful way where people will be caught off God in a way that they will be cut in two. They will not be able to escape. For they tried to estimate the time in their own way. But they end up getting cut off. My Jesus. And this hour they look for is not the hour that Jesus had appointed for them. And they become what? Unaware. They become to be what? Unalert. 
And that goal for us today, we must be alert at all times. We must stand on our post of duty. We must stand on the word of God. We must stand on the word of faith. Amen. I don't care how people look at you all crazy and try to make you stop preaching the word of God, try to make you stop being a witness for Jesus. And I was talking to Pastor Terry. He said, we remember the days in Devonport <laughs> when people threatened us with guns, but we, did we bag off? No, we did not. We quoted the scriptures, no weapon that form against me shall prosper. And every tongue that shall arise against me in the German, I shall condemn. This is what I inherited for being a servant of the Lord. And his righteousness is of me, said the Lord. And no people backed off because the word of God is full of power. Amen. If we really live living right, if our li life is lined up in the word, the devil got to get going. Yes, he does. The devil will run. What the scripture says, submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will do what? Flee. Run. Get away from you. Don't come your way. Amen. Because you know what the word of God is saying. Amen. There's so many people, I'm sorry to say, in these dead churches. I said dead churches. They do not believe the word of God as it is. Amen. They take it out of context. They say prophecy is not for today. The they say speaking in tongues is not for today. The, the gifts of the spirit is not for today. But the devil has lied to them again. That is for today. That, these are our weapons. How many of you remember the scripture? The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but what mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge or the word of God. Amen. And you know one thing? Testimony. You know, sometimes we go out and God say, you better move. And you better go out there, like I tell you. And some of us make excuses. I don't have enough money. And I, I didn't I tell you, I don't have enough money, God. I don't have the substance. But let me tell you, if you really truly believe the word of God, you know God will take care of you. Amen. Right. I've seen him do it over and over again for me. He just did it last night. Amen. I didn't have enough finance. But let me tell you. God bless me through an individual. Give it to me. Praise the Lord. See, God said what? He will supply all of our need. According to riches and glory through Jesus Christ. And someone said, you just crazy, that's all. No, I'm crazy about Jesus. Because Jesus saved me, amen, when I can save myself. How many of you are so glad today that you are born again, amen? How many of you are so glad that you are watching the blood of the Lamb? Hallelujah. That Jesus didn't have to do it, but he did it. And we had a good service this morning. A wash of the, of the feet and we had the Lord's Supper. That was a blessed time. Amen. We must be humble. A lot of people don't want to be that way. Amen. We must be humble as servants and harmless as doves. Amen. Let's move on down in the scripture. Praise God. Hallelujah. His Lord will come from him, for him when he's not aware. And we'll cut him asunder and we'll appoint him his portion with the unbeliever. Now you see the status here. This person had what? Demoted his own self. How many know you can demote your own self? You can simply walk away and that's, that go for the purpose of people saying once saved always. Not true. Not true. Not true. Uh-uh. You got to keep your confession. Every day. You got to keep your true confession. Every day. Amen. We can't afford to skip meals with the Lord. Amen. Amen. We must pray as never before. We must seek you to first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Amen. Can I get a witness? And all of these things that you desire should be added unto you. Amen. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither is the son of man that he should repent. Have he said it and shall he not do it? Have you spoken and shall he not make it good? God is not a liar. He will stand. And his word is true. Amen. His word will not come back to him void. But it shall accomplish what he please. Amen. Praise God. How many of you know that God wants to bless you in a mighty way? Raise your hand and say, yes, Lord. I know that's true. Oh, my Jesus. We must come to expect God to bless us when we come in faith. 
We must come to receive from the Lord today because God is in here to meet your need. I don't care. I don't know what your need, need us today. But if you sincerely mean business with God, he will meet your need. Amen. Praise God. This person has been demoted down to a status just like an unbeliever. Just like he has never knew the Lord. Oh, my Jesus. Hallelujah. Did you hear that? Just like he never knew the Lord. He had went all the way back. He put himself what in reverse. He took his eyes off the word of God. He took his hands off the gospel plow and began to look back. And you remember the story. When Lot's wife, the angel of the Lord warned her not to look back. And when she looked back, she become to be a what? A pillar of salt. Now you don't want this to happen to you. Amen. Can I get a witness? Wave your hand and say, Lord, help me. Don't be like that. Praise God. Hallelujah. And this will happen because we as children of the Most High, we know better. We know better. We have been trained. We have been taught the word of God. Can I get amen? We know what the word is saying to us individually as well as what? Collectively. Amen. Praise God. So there would be no excuse for us. Now, if you heard this message today out there, that means that you will be held accountable. Of the words that I just spoke. Right. You will be held accountable. You will not be able to make any excuses Amen. when Jesus comes back for you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Just want to put that out there. Hallelujah. Verse 47. And that servant which knew his Lord's will, this is a different condition, and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will shall be beaten with many stripes. Let's expound on verse 47. I don't care who the individual is, this condition may fit. They know what God has said in his word. Amen? My Jesus. He knew the will of God. He knew what the word of God was saying. And what's going to happen to this person? He will be beaten with what? Many stripes. Many lashes. Now that's when we're going back to slavery again. You see that? Lashes. Oh, it's revelation. Praise God. We are slaves of Christ. Can I get an amen? Praise the Lord. If we don't do what he said, we will get lashes. Amen? Praise God. And let's move on down to verse 48. But he that knew not and did commit Things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with what? Few stripes. For unto whomsoever much is given, of him shall be much required. And to whom men have committed much, of him they will ask the more. Let's expound on verse 48. Amen. Now, verse 48 is from a different condition from verse 47. In verse 47, this person knew what the word was saying. But look at verse 48. This person did not know as much as the person that was in verse 48. But look what's going to happen to him also. He shall be beaten with what? Fewer stripes. He still don't get a whipping. How many of you know sometimes you gotta, we get our behind whip? And sometimes we think we're rolling in the spirit. But God is whipping our behind. <laughs> Can I get an Amen. Ouch, ouch, ouch. You know it hurts sometimes. You know, I'd rather for God to chastise me now than wait to the end. How many of you know you don't want to die and go to hell? And I know you don't want to go to jail. Just like those angels that sin, they are bound with chains right now. And to judgment. Amen? So we should take heed to this message. This is a message of warning. Amen. Praise God. They should be beaten with field stripes. For whomsoever much is given, and much have been given to us, have much as we know in the word of God, much will be required of us. Right. We will not escape. We will not get away from this. Amen. So it's, we just might as well to gird up our lawns with truth. Amen. And get ready to fight the battle. Amen. Praise God. Whatever we know, we're going to be held accountable. And the answers that we know also, we will be held accountable not to give the answers to someone that's on their way to hell 
or if someone does have backslidden, we as believers of Jesus Christ will be held accountable. Can I get amen? If you can say amen, praise God for that. Amen. No one is exempt. When you become a true believer, amen, we will be held more accountable than the sinner man. Amen? My Jesus. Because the sinner man don't know what as much as all. Amen? Praise God. Let's move on down. As much as that we know, that's just how much people will ask of us. Amen. Oh, I know they don't go over well because... How I many you know, if you have an answer, you must give an answer, amen, to someone that's in need, amen. You must have that agape love, that compassionate love like Jesus had. How I many you know, Jesus, with the woman and Samaria woman at the well, Jesus had compassion. Even though there was different kind of prejudice going on between Jews and Samaritans. How many remember the story? Jesus still didn't worry about that. He went beyond that. He had compassion on this woman. And she became the first woman vanilist. Praise the Lord. Because Jesus did not look at her fallen failures. Can I get an amen? He looked at his, her heart. He knew that she needed a church from God. He knew that she needed something new in her life. Amen? Praise God. And we move on down to another passage of scripture. Go down and step on down or, or back to Luke 12 chapter, we're still in Luke 12 chapter, verse 15, amen? And the name of our subject again is an unexpected time, part two, amen? If you got it, or when you get it, say amen, praise God. Praise God. And it reads as following. And he said unto them, Jesus, take heed and be aware of covenants. For a man's life consists not in the abundance of things which he possesses. Now let's expound on this scripture. I don't care how much material things you have in your life. That still do not guarantee you have salvation. Amen. That do not guarantee you that you're on your way to heaven. There are a lot of people say, I go to church every Sunday. I don't care. But are you born again? Are you saved? Are you a true believer of Jesus Christ? Oh, there's a lot of people sitting up in the churches. It's on their way to hell. Ouch. Man, this is a message of warning. Praise God. It don't make no difference what people got. I don't care. And you will see later on the, the verse of scripture that will come up as another severe warning. Amen. Look at verse 16. And he spake a parable unto them saying, the ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. Amen. The ground that he had, he had some of the best ground that anyone can have. It will, would produce any kind of crop that he wanted. Amen. He had all that he needed in his life. Amen. As we move on down. Verse 17. And he thought within himself, saying, what shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestore my fruits. Let's go to the Amplified Version. And he considered and debated within himself. What shall I do? I have no place in which to gather together my harvest. My Jesus. Let's look at verse 18. And he said, this will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. Amplified version. And he said, I will do this. I will pull down my what? Storehouses. <laughs> and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain. All my produce. And my goods. And now we see in these couple. 
remember a verse in the scripture where this man thought he had it made because he had all the natural things that he wanted. Amen. He had all the produce that he needed. Amen. He had big storehouses. He, he was satisfied, excuse me, with the storehouses that he had. Can I get an amen? And we see that today. How many of you see that today? People just keep on building. They are not satisfied in this building over here. And all of a sudden, here you see a new building over here. And we see this in this area. How many of you see many vacant buildings which are not being used? What is the purpose? You tell me. That's just being plain greedy. You know rich people have to be very careful. Because they can fall into the area of greed very easily. Amen? Praise God. And they will not think about no one else but they what? Their self. And that's what you call selfish. Amen? My Jesus. And you see around in this area, they are building. They start off with a small building. Not satisfied. And they build larger ones to satisfy their flesh. Amen. How many of you know the flesh is of no good? How many of you know if you do things for the glory of the flesh, your works will be burned up? But if you do the works for the glory of God, you will receive a crown of life, which the Lord has promised to them. Amen. Believe in him, praise God. Somebody ought to praise him for that. Oh, somebody ought to praise him. Come on, somebody. Somebody, somebody praise him. Woo! How many of you ready to receive your righteous reward? Praise God. Woo! My Jesus, that's what we down here for, people. We just ain't down here just speaking just to sound good. We ain't down here just sitting down on our uh, fannies, my mom say. Not doing anything, not working. But we will be held accountable if we're not doing the works for the glory of God. My Jesus. Come on, people. Amen. My God, I thank you. My Jesus. Look at what else. This man had fruits. I'm sure he had so many animals, cattle, pigs. He had great resources of finance. Amen. That was probably back then they might hid it in the ground. How many of you know your grandparents or your ancestors hid money in, in walls? And some of them, I'm going to tell you the truth, hid money in like clay dirt banks down south. They dig a hole in a clay bank up in there, way up in there, and they put money in there. And some people have found money in tin cans. And people did all sorts of things. And we used to say, well, the mattress is safe. No, no, no. People know where to go. Get, they'll find your mattress. Amen? <laughs> all they got to do is flip it up. And they got what they need. Amen? Praise God. But we had to be very careful not to find ourselves in these conditions. Amen? Praise God. Let's move on down. Verse 19. Look at what else he can really say. I will say to my Lord, or my soul, excuse me, soul, thou has much goods. My Jesus, laid up for what many years. Take that ease, eat, drink, and be merry. Verse 19, Amplified, I will say to my soul, soul, you have many good things laid up, enough for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and enjoy yourself merrily. All right, let's move on down to the, I think the last verse, praise God, as we get ready to close this message, praise God. But God, I said, but God, said unto him Woo! thou fool did you hear what I just said thou fool God called this man a fool he did not prepare himself he tried to estimate times in his own time the time zone that he was thinking about was not the time zone God was saying amen this night thou soul shall be required of thee, then whose shall those things be which thou has provided? God was saying, Thou fool, 
your soul is required right on the spot right now. And the man probably said within himself, Lord, can you give me more time? Could you give me another second? Could you give me another minute? Could you give me another hour? Could you give me another day, Lord? Could you give me another week? But no, no, your time is up. Your number is pulled. And the time of your departure is at hand. You must go into eternity. Yep. Regardless if you're ready or not, here I come. Yep. So that behooves us to not to take the foolish way, not to count up the cost and say, My, I got a lot of time left. Don't fool yourself. Amen. We don't have much time as we think. These young people say, I got plenty of time. Oh, I'm feeling good in my body. I have no aches and pains, but don't let that deceive you. That do not guarantee you that you will live from one day to another. No. Hallelujah. My Jesus. And I'll tell you the truth. We are guaranteed on one thing, to live now while we have a chance. Amen. While you're living now, right now, while you're breathing now. It's time to have a what? A repentant heart. Don't find yourself in this type of condition like the rich man was. Laying up treasure for many years but got cut off at the wrong time. Praise God as we close. My Jesus. For I say unto you today, be thou prepared at all times. Do not take for granted do not take for granted of the time zone that we are in. Get yourself lined up in the word of God. Study my word as never before. Seek me while you can find me. For there will come a time where you shall not be able to find me. Get yourself engrafted in my word. Get yourself engrafted in my word. For I speak to the body of Christ. Continue to be faithful, I say unto you. Continue to be faithful until the end. And then you will hear, come on up, my good and faithful servant. I will make you a ruler over many things. Come on up. And I will make you a ruler. I will make you a ruler over many things. Over many things. Thank God. God bless you. I have a burden of warnings in my spirit, people. Oh, there was a warning last night that went out, and I warned them. Same message keep coming in my mind every time to warn. And somebody in that congregation confirmed the very fact what I was saying. There was a young people just got killed up in Saginaw, Michigan the day before I got there. But here are two confirmation. Death is certain. Life is uncertain. People are preparing for their own things. But they are not making their calling and election sure. They are not wrapped up and tied up and tangled up in Jesus. You see, because one thing about it, we got to have a mindset every day that Jesus could come for me anytime. You know what happened? You see what happened to our pastor. But God had been speaking through him to us for many times. And told us he'll be with his dogs when this is going to happen. And I tell you, by the grace of God, as far as I know, that's the only man I know of pretty close. Knowing with the time. The only man I do, right, for that I remember, we're close. And he said it like it was. He said, 40, 48 hours, I want to be in the ground. And I will never forget. Because I think about it all the time. A lot. I say it like that. And that's the reason I say I'm being engrafted in this church. It's never before. Something that I can't escape. You know, how many of you try to get away from things which you will not be able to escape because they keep coming at you? The more you do things, the more you learn. I was telling my son, and I'm going to close. I know my mouth is talking. I say, I was in the second. I said, son, I can't help you now. He had, he had some gay problem with his car. And I, God let me give him instructions. It seemed to me he followed instructions. I said, this is was a learning process for you. But sometimes you might not have me around. Come on now. And you remember Jesus told his disciples that, right? right? He said,
said, you might not have me with you always. And they did not listen. And some of them went all the way after he was resurrected until the angel spoke to him. Do you remember what they told you over in Jerusalem? That he will be what? Put in the hands of sinful man. That he will be what? Nailed to the cross. And on three days, he will be resurrected. And, he, and that happened right before them. Amen? Only a few of them. Mary Magdalene was right there. She's right there. And that's what God wants us to be, right there, people. God wants us to be right here. I mean, sometimes we want to go in different places, and we know sometimes we can't get here, and we know wintertime is coming, but if you can find yourself here being faithful. I can hear it in my ear now, Pastor. Oh, is that being faithful? He's, and it's in me. He said, be faithful, be faithful, be faithful. And now this message right here was a warning message. Be faithful until the end. Amen. And I'm passing on number. I'm with you. Because I lost my dad in August. I lost my sister-in-law the other week, unexpected, in Davenport. And, you know, once God brings us to the knowledge of this, we must tell people what does said the Lord. Amen. We are all the instruments in the hand of God. Amen. We are God's little children and have overcome the world. Because what? Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Amen. And I tell people, it ain't me doing anything. It's Jesus in me. I'm going to tell you, people want to take God's glory, Pastor. But I tell you, I'm not like that, people. Today I tell you, I ain't got no power within myself to do anything. I can't even bat my eye without the Lord. I can't even walk. I can't talk without him. And some people are bragging and saying what they're doing. Some of the leaders of the church, I'm doing this. I'm laying the hands on the sick and they are being recovered. No, you ain't. No, it's Jesus through you. That's what God wants us to be humble. Like we were having this service this morning. Humbleness. Know who's moving in you. It's Christ in you. Amen. It ain't nothing to do with us. We are just an instrument. We are just like that. A pot of clay laying there, right? How many of you know Adam was a pot of clay laying there? And Jesus, until Jesus blew into the nostrils. That's the only way he become a what? Living soul. Living organism. Amen. Praise God. And we are all living souls. Amen. For the glory of God. And I love everyone. I told him last night. By the grace of God, I will make it back. And God let me make it back. <laughs> he said, use what you got. I'll take that little stretches of time and pray. And I tell you too, when you fire up with Jesus Christ, it's something about when you praise God a lot, it gives you more energy to go down the road a little bit further. That's what happened to me last night, people. I had energy from up there, from up high. And it gave me strength to make it back. Well, may God bless you today for listening to me. But I wanted to tell you that we can take this message out in the streets. Praise God. I love everyone. God bless you, Pastor. Thank you.